Hello and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going through the release of KaiCad 8. Um, so this is going to be a new version of the software that we, we that we have been using for the PCB design projects that we've done in the past. So let's explore some of the new features that are available to us and I'll show you how to download and install this as well. So obviously go to the KaiCad website and press the download button. Um, select your operating system. So in my case, I'm using a Windows PC. And then I'm going to use the European server, but you can use anything else. So wait for that to download. Uh, the file size is 1.1 gig. What I'll do with my PCB project that I'm running at the moment, so the design of the power supply, is try and migrate it over to KiCad 8. Uh, hopefully it's straightforward. So now that it's downloaded, I will just go ahead and install this file. So I'm going to launch KiCad 8 and try to load up my project. So you can see the project is already loaded, so that's a good start. And if I go to the schematic editor, it all looks okay. And just to look at the PCB design. So obviously what this is showing you is that I've not had any issues uh, migrating my KiCad 7 projects to KiCad 8. So that's a really good start. So let's go through some of the new features that are available on this now. So one of the first improvements is the update to the libraries. So they've added a lot more new symbols and footprints. Another great new feature is the support for importing full projects and libraries from EasyEDA. So if you have any projects that you started on um, EasyADA, you should be able to just transfer them over. Unfortunately, I can't test that today because I don't have any projects on EasyADA. I do have some projects on Altium Designer, so I'll see if how that works. Now this is a feature that I really like. Um, so if you have a part with a lot of pinouts, and let's say you want to create a bus or you want to create net labels for a hierarchical symbol or something like that then um, this feature you can see on the screen now really helps make that a lot easier um, you can also do this with no connect markers so if i just go back to um, KiCad and show you that so let's add in a stm processor so i've just added this processor in now I'm going to select all the pins, right click, pin helper, and no connect. So you can see it's added all the no connect symbols in, in one go, which is very helpful. Another thing you can do, as you saw from the animation before, is select all the pins. And then you can add pin helper and wires. So you can do um, basically what we saw before. So if you have a bus that you want to connect up to a QSPI or something like that, you can do that very easily. And the other feature you saw, um, the way to do that is obviously you select all the pins. You right click, pin helper and net label. So that's what added the net labels for all of them. If you're not using hierarchical sheets, so if you've just got the one sheet, you can do that. If you're using multiple sheets and you want to try and connect it um, on a global level, then you can also do this, which, which is fantastic. Now, one of the features I really like, so if you remember from my video last time when I designed um, this buck boost converter, is I tried to change the name of this and I couldn't because I was um, trying to find a power symbol. So let's say uh, I'm just going to use this one as an example. And then I tried to change the name on this, but I couldn't. But now um, you can basically say 5 volt USB and you can name it to whatever you like, which wasn't possible in KiCad 7. So let's continue looking at some of the new features. I think oh, this one's fantastic. I love it. So what this feature is telling you is that um, you can have multiple grids depending on what you're doing. So if you're moving around a component, then let's you want a grid size of 2 mil. But then for um, the wires, you want a grid of 1 mil. So you can have multiple grids depending on what you're doing. So let's see how that works. So preferences, preferences, grids, 
and you can see you've got multiple grids here so let's say i'm on one of my options here let's um i'm going to select grid 2.54 now you can see from the preferences for grids uh when the grid is set to 2.54 my connected items are one on a grid of 1.27 the wires are on a 1.27 but the text is on a 0 0.25 grid now let's put down some text on this to see how that works so let's say example and you can see the grid is a lot smaller so um, that was 0 0.254 but if i do wires that's um if i do wires that's 1.27 so having these multiple grids was not possible in kite cat 7 so again really good feature so um just for information if you don't know moving between grids is done by pressing the end button these options here are from preferences preferences and then you have the grid option here so you, you can add in more if you want to so we already spoke about this one so editing the power symbols i've never used um, KiCad simulation software before I'm not sure what it's adding here or if this is a completely new feature. It is something we can look at in the future if we need to. So let's look at this feature now. So multiple footprint dragging and how this worked in KiCad 7 compared to how it works in um, KiCad 8. So if I go to KiCad 7 and the PCB editor. So I'm going to go into the PCB editor and select a random component with some tracks on there. So let's go for R5 over here. So if I click on this component, press the D button, I can basically move it um, and it takes the tracks along with the footprint move. If I try and do that with multiple footprints, um, I don't have any here as an example, maybe this. I, can't, I cannot do it to um, multiple footprints. However, with KiCad 8, I should be able to do that now looking at that feature. So let's try these two. You can see the components are moving and taking the track with it for both components at the same time. Again, very neat and time-saving feature. To, to move these two components, I'm pressing the D key on my keyboard and you can move them at the same time. So what you do is you select the components and you press D. And this allows you to move them, taking the tracks along with the move. So with this new feature in KaiCad 8, it looks like the track tuning um, capabilities on KaiCad 8 has been made easier. So let, let's have a look at the PCB to see how this works. So you've got your track tuning over here. So let's just select it and So that is a lot better than what it was before, as, as I seem to remember doing this last time. Obviously, this is just a random track, but I've, I can see the length here. Um, let's see what that looked like in KiCad 7. So you had this track and tune track length. And now they've basically become individual and I can't tune them anymore. So yeah, th this basically becomes a fixed length um, track that I, you would have to just delete and start again, I think. I mean, I've not used this feature that much. I've just used it once when I had a high speed um, flash memory that I was using for a previous project. But obviously you can see with Kai Kade, um that seems so much easier and you can just change it. Um, which seems like a massive improvement and you can um, change your distances in the track as well so you just get a nice box and you can fine tune your length so the last thing i'm going to talk about is the 3d viewer which i like to use quite a lot um, just because you can physically see the board just makes it easier to visualize the especially for the silk screen um, what they've done i think is make it easier to kind of remove the components from the front and the bottom 
you can see in the previous version of this um, software you did not have any of these um, appearance which is very similar to what you have in the PCB design so you can toggle off like copper areas inner layers components things like that silk screen in the 3d viewer so um yes a nice feature again i think so that's all i'm gonna share with you um for today so obviously this is a massive change to KiCad, and i'll be using KiCad 8 going forward especially for this project where i'm building a three level power supply so my main aim is to build a five volt a 3v3 volt and a 12 volt power supply for use in development and for making my videos so tune in for that as i'll continue building that project further